supply and demand, right? Supply has not kept up for the demand for housing. This is not a new problem. Uh, I think when I was coming out of graduate school before many people in this room were born, to be perfectly honest, that's the first time it's like, oh, there's like 15 people bidding on this house in like 1998, which to me means that there is a housing availability problem, right? And it was painful then and it's only gotten worse now. So we have had a housing, like the, the, the amount of housing for the people that are coming here and needing housing, not even if you're coming here, if you're born here, I guess you did come here, um, there, there has not been enough housing. Is it affordable? No, it has not been. And the reason why I know that is I used to be the compliance lady for the Seattle Chinatown IDPDA. The, the person on the fixed income used to be at about 23%, 22% area median income, technical term. And over time, they're now down to like 10 or 11%. Their income uh, is adjusted if you're on fixed in income by a uh, consumer price index typically. But the, the job growth here in certain sectors has really taken off. And so um, this person who's been plugging along, CPI, their rents are not, the amount of income that they have is unable to keep up with that. And so uh, housing is just getting more and more. And so if I remember at the University of Washington when I took economics, right, the supply and demand curve, if the supply is not keeping up with demand, cost shift. And it is painful. And so I would say single family zoning is potentially a problem if it really is 80% of where it is. Because when I think about where the multifamily zones are, they may not always be where I might want to live or close to the amenities that I might want or that I actually might feel like I need in order to sustain the way that I live. And to be perfectly honest, uh, I may want my, I, my daughter may not be able to afford to live here. She's 19. Um, but heck knows, I don't want her sharing a kitchen with me. Or my brother-in-law, who's 68, I may want, I may need to provide care for him. God forbid. Um, but I don't want to live with him because he's kind of that way, right? So, I mean, it's like, how do we allow for this so we can take care of each other um, and not have to share the same bathroom or kitchen because it's not going to work.